Hey fam, what's up? Oh my god, oh my god. I mean, I knew that I was gonna feel a wave of regret as soon as I said it, but it was so, so instant. Hi everybody, how are you doing? It's me, your mom. Why, uh, why didn't you answer my calls last night? Honey, today I have a review for you. It's gonna be on the second season of American Crime Story, The Assassination of Gianni Versace. This was highly, 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 highly. Highly recommended by a friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> Ron, if you're watching this, like, here you go, friend, here you go. If you're new and you haven't seen any of my videos before, first of all, you're lucky. Get out now while you still can. So, non-spoiler review, let us begin. I actually have a bunch of notes here that spans like a few pages because I, you know, I, I watched the entire series in one sitting. So if you guys don't know, the assassination of Gianni Versace is about the assassination of Gianni Versace. Perpetrator being Andrew Cunanan, this Phil Am Italian uh, Mensa IQ person who um, eventually took his own life at the age of 27. Eight days! after he had assassinated Gianni Versace. So I went into this series with as very little knowledge as possible on what actually happened. I started out with like zero background on everything that happened and then I read one or two lines from... Um, I'm so tempted to say the Wikipedia. It's not that. It's it's Wikipedia. <laughs> I looked up Andrew Gunanen and I just uh, read up a little bit about his backstory and his life. Not so much about the events that transpired. It's all right, Andrew Gunanen, uh, also known as that guy at the bar that smiled at you once. And if you had taken that fifth shot of tequila, you would have totally gone home with him. Except your one friend got really drunk, so you had to take care of her. And she essentially cock-blocked you in the entire night. But hey, at least you're alive. And still single. But don't you remember? I'm so hungry. I'm so fucking hungry. I was so hungry earlier, and I think that was the reason why I was losing my mind. And I'm I'm a happy, full, full little boy. Anyway, where was I? <laughs> Andrew Kunana and the way that he was written in this show is so fucking fascinating just the way that his mind works some of my favorite things to watch on like crime tv and crime networks and crime shows don't look at me like that you know you watch these shows too there's a morbid fascination around it so don't fucking don't judge me my favorite category is either crimes of passion like wives secretly poisoning their husbands love that shit or like sociopaths so watching Andrew Kunanen and the way that they interpreted his character and especially since I feel like the goal in making this show is, is to obviously to humanize him any any sort of storytelling in which you're able to accomplish fleshing out a character and doing that seamlessly already like you have my respect they were able to do that pretty well in this show i mean i love how they told the tale backwards they went from like the murder that happened and then they introduced the character if you notice watching this that whenever andrew hunanen is trying to play the part of someone that he feels is the most appealing for whatever person that he's faced with it's always kind of very warm and inviting the the colors and, and the overall look of it but then when he once he's back into you know looking at his credit card debt or living the actual life that he's living which isn't necessarily upper echelon then it's sort of blank and dreary and empty and it's all white walls and it's sad so i was kind of already wondering if ryan murphy was also the creator of this because i never heard of it i don't know any background on this show and then looking into it uh uh discovered that he i think he directed the pilot well not the pilot the first episode of the second season and he also is a producer for the show i i think i would much more so compare this to American Horror Story. Uh, there's a style there that's very, um, 
very like campy and indulgent I guess you could say like he plays on a lot of the cliches you know I don't think that cliches are a big big fault I think that every now and then cliches can be forgivable especially if you can find a way to sort of twist it and execute it in a way that's refreshing and watching this it also kind of reminds me of the reason that I fell in love with American Horror Story but then season six of American Horror Story happened and that reminded me of why I fell out of it but we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that and it's nine episodes 40 to 50 minutes per episode darren chris my god where do i i don't even know where to start with this guy he actually kind of reminds me of brendan yuri like he looks like brendan yuri a little bit or is that i don't know is that insulting to like compare compare people maybe not then um he looks like himself i darren chris all i see is you re in any case darren chris portrayed Andrew Cunanan beautifully the attention to detail that he put into like the little mannerisms and the ticks the pauses that he would take before responding to another person because Andrew Cunanan is known to be he's known to embellish I also like how this was set in the 90s but there's a very topical commentary on the obsession with fame um the fascination with celebrity and and how how that works and the negative effects of that but one of my favorite commentaries of the show everything that has to do with like success and the different approaches to it my biggest question watching this whole thing is did andrew Konanen and gianni versace ever meet in real life and then second to that would be what would be the motive motivation behind uh andrew killing him so given that the show already wasn't you know they weren't exactly afraid to take their liberties especially on the side of like the finer details of moving the plot along so i guess it was that for that reason that i sort of expected that by the end of the season there would be something i don't know like a an ending that would explain things <laughs> like the ending was okay it wasn't you know it wasn't something that made me go like oh oh my god yes well brother yeah brother it was kind of anticlimactic i guess left me feeling a little bit lukewarm about the entire thing but the show as a whole is still very good so i guess that's it that's all that i can really say for the non-spoiler part of this review and if you guys want to stick around for the spoiler review just wait three seconds because we got to give these pussies a chance no i can't say that um let's rewind Hi, I'm still here. I love the opening of the show. I love seeing the side-by-side -side morning routines. I mean, there's, def there's definitely gotta be a meme in there. Expectation versus reality. When I ordered it from the internet versus when it comes to me packaged in a in a neat bow classic comedy andrew Hunanen, love him love him but also fuck off you know what i mean i love that thing that he said about his mother she wants to keep italy only in her mind as this perfect place because it also kind of rings true for andrew he sees something and he builds an idea around it and if that that person doesn't follow the idea that he already has built around them then he goes crazy he went overboard with that shit he was like so extra special mention to the blonde guy next to gianni during this entire conversation i loved how he was just like i am no opening act sis what am i you fluffer you fucking you fucking seat warmer did i just say fluffa the friend who recommended this show to me has just been feeding me endless information and it's been incredibly helpful in the creation of this video so thank you so much rona she told me that there really isn't any existing footage video footage of andrew Konanen out there darren chris had to build this character from the ground up not unheard of but the way in which he was able to portray this person the way that he was able to build a character i mean that's pretty fucking admirable also this dude bird watching our research see that's a double pun and if you speak the god you'll know what i mean <laughs> also donatella versace like so good you wouldn't even do that max greenfield was in this as well that was surprising and i loved him he was such a soft like sad character for those of you who don't know max greenfield plays schmidt in a new girl and he also he has a lot of other roles i'm pretty sure oh his name's ronnie Oh, sorry. It's me, Ronnie. Ronnie. Because <laughs> you're just like your father, Ronnie. So the madness of Andrew Hunanan is kind of like gradually revealed. One of my favorite uh, scenes is what I'm calling the flesh trunk scene. You can't, you can't, you can't die and not watch that scene. I'm pretty sure the only person who shouldn't be watching that is Darren Chris.
and his grandmother. Little things too, the way that he would take a, 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 a bit of a pause before re responding to anyone. Lost my best friend and the love of my life. I'm sorry. Recently? This year. Both of them? Yeah. At around episode three, Andrew Cunanan says a line about disgrace. You know, disgrace isn't that bad. Once you settle into it. And I don't think I've ever related to a sociopath more than in that moment. But then again, you know, for me, I use that line to comfort myself when I'm, you know, maybe like halfway done with a Big Mac. Whereas Andrew likes to use that in times of murder, torture. So, you know, a, a, a bit of a difference between me and Andrew, a little bit, a little bit of a difference. We're both Filipino though. I also kind of want to speak about the way that Andrew Kunanan would wrap masking tape or electrical tape around the faces of a couple of the people that he either tried to harm or fully killed. I think it's great because it kind of speaks, I mean, it's not great. Like I wouldn't suggest that you go out of your house and do that to another person. I mean, it's great in the sense that it highly supports Andrew Kunanan's character. There are people in his life that even even the, even the good looking ones, even the ones that he plans on keeping for a really long time, in essence, they're kind of faceless and their personalities mean nothing. Episode 6 too had like one of my favorite scenes. This episode was featuring the time that he lived for a little bit with uh, Norman. Fuck me in the ass. That's not his last name. And he was throwing a birthday party in which he invited Jeff Trail and David Madsen. And in order to sort of project some sort of image that he's loved according to his standards. And you need to give me this. You want me to pretend that that's my gift to you? He mocked his clothes. He mocked his his whole career and his choices in life. Fuck. It's a shit thing. You and I know this because we're, we're okay, I think. I know people that are to some degree kind of like Andrew. I mean, just in the sense of like image mattering the most to them. Whereas I'm over here like recording the audio of this thing through a fucking mic stand. It looks like a secondhand dildo. I got so worked up. It just, honestly, maybe I'm, am I triggered? Oh my god, Andrew's mom. I feel so bad for her. I do, I do really like the fact though that of all the things, of all of these incredible lavish stories that, and lies that, you know, Andrew Gunana would spew, they lie about his penis size. I'm well endowed. Show me. Put it away. Nope. Not not my boy Andrew. Episode 8 is probably my most favorite one, and it talks about the the childhood of Andrew Hunan and, and how he grew up. There is also a snippet of Gianni Versace and how his mother treated him and how she wanted him to view this this career path that he wants to take which is designing clothes she told him that it takes a lot of hard work and it's not going to be easy because success is never easy versus andrew's childhood where he was always told that he was special and he was given you know all the gifts all of the advantages and opportunities modesto Hunanan. i don't know who that actor is but goddamn i would rank episode five and four to be my top two and top three favorites. Actually, the storyline of Andrew Hunanan, Jeff Trail, and David Madsen would have to be my favorites. Now that we are at this point of the video, I might as well go through the things that I didn't, like, that kind of threw me off a little bit. It is completely possible that I am just nitpicking, but for now, on the first viewing, I would say that these are the things that kind of threw me off. I don't know how to say this, and I don't really want it to sound the way that it's about to sound but i feel like this was a little too um like americanized and i get it like it's called american crime story but a lot of the characters like gianni versace actually the two main characters gianni versace and and andrew Kunanan, are both of foreign descents and uh, backgrounds. Whenever Gianni and Donatella are speaking together and they're just in the company of family, I don't understand why there's like not one lick of Italian. So obviously, when Andrew Kunanan went back to the Philippines in Manila, I couldn't help but criticize how it just didn't look 
it didn't it didn't look real the house that modesto hunanan described as the kind of house that the guys that merrill lynch would be able to buy with just the money in their pockets um no that house of modesto in which andrew had found him that house that was supposed to depict like being at the lowest of low let me tell you, that's not the lowest of low. That's not what the lowest of low houses look like. It still looked like a pretty livable, beautiful house like I would live in that house. And the way that the the uncle... <laughs> Listen, all of my Filipinos out there, you know it was weird the way that he was talking in Tagalog. Kamusta, Andrew? Ah? Call me Tito. Huh? Do you speak Tagalog? Is my father here? He's here. In there? Tito, Tito, Tito. I don't know, it lacked authenticity. Earlier when I was making this video, I mentioned how the ending was pretty anticlimactic for me, and now I can kind of tell you why. What I got from watching the, the series is that the motivation at the very basic level of it for Andrew Kunanan murdering Gianni Versace is because of rejection. There was some foreshadowing to it, I'll say that. I kind of had like an inkling, kind of like a feeling that that would be the reason why. The idea of being told no is not We're all told no. You're not told. <laughs> that is not true. For me, being told no is like being told I don't exist. Like, I can't really get with that ending. In any case, uh, would I recommend this show? Yes, 100%. I still would. Love the performances and the cast. Uh, overall rating, I would like to give it a... Um... Five naked, beautiful Darren Chris butts out of six. So you're welcome. I hope I edit that well. And to end this video, I compiled a list of my top, how many of these? Top seven uh, versions of Darren Chris. Fleshy pink trunks, Darren Chris. Beautiful. Love it. Uh, just the right kind of right kind of art puppy dog eyes darren chris what is what is a sunrise you know you're too cute darren chris being sweaty in the philippines darren chris thinking about his next lie pretending to give a fuck darren chris i can't even tell you guys i felt that i felt that in my bones laughing over champagne busting a fat nut over him like yes um Classic, classic right there. I am that bottle of champagne. If anyone were to look up my name online, let it be just a GIF of that champagne next to Darren Chris. What? And last but not least, Darren Chris's several attempts, failed attempts, at saying Baliwag. I'm going to Bali Baliwag. That has been my video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for that thumbs up that you're about to give it. You weren't about to get- yes you were. I saw you. I saw it in your eyes. And if you've watched up until this point, thank you so much. My name is Noah. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, feel free to subscribe. It's free. It's whatever. Also, you can follow me on all of my social media listed up there. I say hi every now and then, and if I don't, don't take it personally. Because if I didn't, then I am probably just trying to finish the second half of the Big Mac that I said earlier. That's not true. I don't eat Big Macs.